Meantime, Jeff Bezos' space venture, Blue Origin, cutting 10 percent of its workforce in an email obtained by CNBC's Morgan Brennan that was sent out just a few minutes ago. The layoffs will impact positions in engineering, R&D, and program project management. Almost a month after the first orbital flight, Blue Origin's CEO finally revealed what exactly happened to New Glenn's booster, which vanished during its descent. More importantly, he even unveiled the company's ambition to land on the moon this year after laying off 1,000 employees. Is this another joke? Let's find out everything in today's Tech Map episode. Anyway, our next goal is 100,000, and we need your support to get there. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We appreciate your help. Thank you. On January 16th, 2025, Blue Origin successfully launched its New Glenn rocket into orbit, marking a significant achievement for Jeff Bezos' space venture and potentially positioning it as a competitor to SpaceX. The launch, which occurred at 2.03 a.m. EST, saw New Glenn's 7BE-4 engines ignite, propelling the rocket from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. The second stage reached its final orbit after two successful burns of the BE-3U engines. The primary objective of reaching orbit was achieved, but another objective of recovering the booster failed. The booster was lost during descent with telemetry from that stage, freezing at about the T plus 755 mark during a re-entry burn by three of the seven BE-4 engines in the booster. Nearly a month passed, and the company certainly figured out what went wrong. At the Commercial Space Conference in Washington on February 12th, BO's CEO, Dave Limp, stated that the malfunction came from some kind of engine issue. But as usual, he did not go into detail. We had most of the right conditions in the engine, but we weren't able to get everything right to the engine from the tanks, he said. We think we understand what the issues are. He noted, though, that demonstrating the in-flight relight of the BE-4 engines was one thing Blue Origin could not demonstrate before the launch. This was our first attempt at it. I don't want to go into too much detail because we're still going through the anomaly investigation. I feel like the team has a really good handle to it, and modifications are not complicated. Since the modifications are not complicated, BO can target late spring as the next doable launch time frame. A second booster is in production, and LIMP doesn't think it's going to delay BO's path to flight. Of course, at that time, they have to manage to recover the giant rocket's first stage by landing it on a Jacqueline Autonomous landing barge. Along with the efforts to launch New Glenn again, Blue Origin is set to implement significant workforce reductions, laying off approximately 10% of its employees which could impact over 1,000 individuals. CEO Dave Limp announced that the layoffs would affect positions in engineering, research and development, and program project management, as well as reduce management layers. This decision aligns with Blue Origin's efforts to finalize its annual operating plan, which focuses on scaling up manufacturing and increasing the frequency of rocket launches. This is important because the Washington-based company has a lot of plans ahead. This year alone, Blue wants to perform as many as 10 New Glenn launches in an effort to scale the cadence of New Glenn missions quickly. Among those, there will be three test flights, followed by several commercial missions for a variety of customers. The New Glenn program already has several vehicles in production and is producing one BE-4 engine a week and expects to double or triple that rate in the next 12 to 18 months. It means they are producing about 50 engines annually at the moment, with plans to increase output to 100 to 150 per year. The new Glenn rocket uses seven BE-4 engines, while the Vulcan rocket uses two. It also has multiple years of orders from customers like NASA, Amazon's Project Kuiper, AST Space Mobile, and several telecommunications providers. Amazon has booked 12 launches on Blue Origin's New Glenn, with options for 15 additional launches for the Project Kuiper satellite broadband service. Project Kuiper is a mega constellation of satellites in low Earth orbit that will offer broadband internet access. This constellation will be managed by Kuiper Systems LLC, 
a subsidiary of Amazon. This constellation is planned to be composed of 3,276 satellites, with 61 satellites will be carried on each New Glenn launch. Amazon's project Kuiper faces an FCC deadline of July 30, 2026, to have half of its planned constellation of 3,236 satellites in orbit. In addition to Blue Origin, Amazon has also procured three launches from SpaceX. AST Space Mobile has a multi-launch agreement with Blue Origin to deliver its next-generation Block 2 Bluebird satellites to low-Earth orbit using the new Glenn rocket. These launches are planned over a multi-year period from Blue Origin's Launch Complex 36 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. AST Space Mobile plans to use New Glenn, SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket, and India's GSLV rocket to deploy up to 60 satellites in 2025 and 2026. Each New Glenn launch can send as many as eight Block 2 Bluebird satellites to low Earth orbit due to its 7-meter fairing. Also, Blue Origin is certifying New Glenn with the U.S. Space Force for the National Security Space Launch NSSL, program to meet emerging national security objectives. New Glenn's first launch counts toward this certification process. This certification allows Blue Origin to compete for NSSL missions against SpaceX and United Launch Alliance for at least 30 launches through June 2029, with an option for another five years. Last but certainly not least, it's about New Glenn's role in NASA's Artemis program. NASA has selected Blue Origin to develop a lunar lander to transport astronauts on Artemis missions, which will start at the end of the decade. Blue Origin is developing a family of lunar landers called Blue Moon, designed to transport both humans and cargo to the moon, with two versions that will fly on New Glenn. Mark 1 is a single launch, lunar cargo lander, that remains on the surface and provides safe, reliable, and affordable access to the lunar surface. This uncrewed and non-reusable lander can transport 3,000 kilograms of payload to the lunar surface. When talking about the plans beyond the second launch for New Glenn, LIMP suggested one upcoming launch will be of the Mark 1 version of its Blue Moon lunar lander. Blue Origin aims to land its Blue Moon Mark 1 cargo vehicle on the moon in 2025, and CEO Dave LIMP also expresses his confidence about it. I'm very confident that we can get that on the moon this year. Nevertheless, this timeline raises some concerns about the risk of facing Berger's law. A humorous expression by Eric Berger, senior space editor at Ars Technica, who has a deep involvement in spaceflight. If the rocket is predicted to make its debut in quarter four of a calendar year, and that quarter is six or more months away, the launch will be delayed. Surprisingly, this law has worked in many cases before. For example, New Glenn's maiden flight was originally scheduled for October 2024, but it was delayed and actually launched on January 16, 2025. Hopefully, the same thing will not happen for Blue Moon. So, how about you? Do you think Berger's law will work for this launch of Blue Moon Mark 1? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Mark 1 serves as a technology demonstrator for its larger, crude Mark 2. BO's Dave Limp professed confidence in Blue Origin's ability to have Mark 2 ready for the fifth Artemis launch, currently set for 2030. Blue is developing a Mark 2 crude version for NASA's Artemis project as an alternative to a version of SpaceX's Starship. A larger human lander planned to land a crew of four astronauts on the lunar surface for up to 30 days for the Artemis 5 mission. A variant of the lander designed to carry cargo is also planned, capable of carrying a payload of up to 20 tons, 44,000 pounds, to the surface of the moon in a reusable configuration, or 30 tons, 66,000 pounds, in a one-way mission. At the conference, LIMP revealed that Blue Moon architecture could be adapted for Mars missions. Many core technologies can be applied to a Mars transit, including keeping the liquid hydrogen fuel for Blue Moon's BE-7 engines barely above absolute zero over long periods of time. The Blue Moon's technology for Mars would be useful for NASA's Mars Sample Return Mission, 
which aimed at bringing samples of Martian rocks, soil, and atmosphere back to Earth for detailed analysis. This proposal likely focuses on aspects like landing, ascent, and possibly the containment and transportation of Martian samples. To make all of those possible, Blue Origin plans to utilize its suborbital New Shepard as a testbed for almost everything they do. LIMP says that New Shepard will be a very good business for Blue Origin for both research and tourism flights. It's safe to say Blue Origin is expressing clearly its ambition to compete with its arch-rival, SpaceX. Developing its Blue Moon architecture aligns with the intention of President Trump to send astronauts to Mars, which is a longtime goal of Elon Musk. As Donald Trump's biggest supporter in the race to the White House, Elon Musk now enjoys a level of access to a president unparalleled among space executives, and maybe any CEO. Despite that, Bezos remains outwardly unfazed. He's publicly trusting Musk's word that he won't exploit his political influence to give SpaceX an edge. Adding another layer of intrigue, Bezos has even voiced support for the Department of Government Efficiency, a committee co-chaired by Musk, suggesting a complex dynamic of competition and perhaps a sliver of common ground in the quest to shape the future of space exploration. Is Bezos being genuinely magnanimous? Or is this a calculated move in a high-stakes game where political maneuvering is as crucial as rocket science? Only time will tell. Anyway, to actually compete with SpaceX, Blue Origin needs a comprehensive change. Dave Limp said that Blue Origin has been in kind of an R&D phase for a long time, an aspect of the company's culture he's trying to change. According to him, there is genuine excitement and passion for space within Blue Origin's workforce, which forms the basis of a missionary culture. He contrasts this with Amazon, where customer-centric principles drive the culture, but lack Blue Origin's fervent mission. LIMP is working to integrate Amazon's customer-centric focus into Blue Origin, emphasizing the importance of prioritizing customers, including entities like NASA and ULA, to facilitate this cultural shift, LIMP has brought in new leadership, including Alan Parker as CFO after past executive finance roles at Zillow and Amazon, Jennifer Pinalinos as Chief People Officer after running human resources in LIMP's prior Amazon Devices team, Ian Richardson as Senior Vice President of Manufacturing Operations after a long stint as SpaceX Production Director and Tim Collins as the Vice President of Global Supply Chain, after previously leading global operations for Flexport and Amazon. Additionally, LIMP has shifted more of the company's workforce to the factory floor, 